The other week, I covered what I'm calling the B Cash Fest finale. Following years upon years of kernel development issues, Kent just not following basic schedules, trying to push up features during the RC, trying to push up giant patch sets during the RC, and then arguing every single time why he should be allowed to do so, and also arguing why his file system is so much better than ButterFS and why that's a reason why he should be allowed to do this. After all this went down, and after finally something was done, the project was swapped over to what is called externally maintained. Now there is one thing I got wrong in that video. I said that externally maintained is something made up for bcachefs. Now, it is true that this is the only reference to externally maintained in the maintainer's documentation. There is no explanation on what this means, but apparently there was a project in the past that was also using this term. It's just now been removed from the kernel, and it doesn't change the fact that there is no documentation for what this means. And the big question at the time is, what happens now? Is the project effectively removed from the kernel? Is the code going to sit there, but no one's going to be updating it? Is it a situation we need like a middleman to send the patches up, but Kent himself can't be involved? Well, now we actually know the answer as Kent posted this email. Upcoming changes for bcachefs, notes for users distributions. As many of you are no doubt aware, bcachefs is switching to shipping as a DKMS module. So this is a module that is loaded into the kernel rather than being shipped as part of the kernel. Think the same way the NVIDIA drivers work. It's not proprietary in this case, but that is also using the DKMS system. Once the DKMS packages are in place, very little should change for end users. That is assuming that you actually install the DKMS modules yourself or you're on a distribution that provides them for you in a form of a package, or as part of the kernel that you're getting pre-installed on the system. If you don't install it, well, the file system's not going to work. But we've got some work to do on the distribution side of things to make sure things go smoothly. Now, the good news. If you like good things happening to bcachefest, or you just generally happen to be a user of the project. The community has been stepping up to help out, and distribution so far have been helping and making sure this goes smoothly. This is important because there are a lot of people using bcachefest on major distributions who've been getting it from the normal stock kernel. So even though Kent has been annoying in upstream, there are users of bcachefest, and if the distributions just say, well, we're just not going to ship this file system, we're not going to have packages for it, you're then in a situation where the users direct their anger at the project, at the distro, because now it's the distribution that is breaking something. This isn't like a distro not wanting to include Ex Libre, or not include Hyperland, or not include pick some random project where it's relatively easy to swap. If you're not including support for a file system, you don't have access to your data. Now, it's worth noting that about a year ago, Debian did orphan the bcachefest tools. These are the tools for working with the bcachefest file system. There are other means to do so when it was upstream, but this is now a lot more important because you're going to need those tools to actually work with the file system. There is some work to bring this back in experimental right now, but we'll get to that a little bit later. Over on the OpenSUSE side, very quickly after the externally maintained thing, they were quick to basically announce the death of bcachefs and how it was no longer going to be a thing within OpenSUSE. So there's some work to iron out on that side if you want to make sure that things are going to continue working there. And Kent is in the comment section here, you know, trying to iron things out. Now, over on the Arch and Fedora side, they do have packages for bcachefs, so I would expect that nothing to change there. I would expect there to be a package for the module as well. Yes, you'll still be able to use your root file system. DKMS modules can be included in an init just like any other module. I don't know why you would be running an experimental file system as your root file system, but if you're the kind of person to do so, 
you can keep doing so. My git trees are still there, and I'm going to switch to basing them on the .0 releases. For people who are comfortable with compiling kernels or want to avoid DKMS hassle, this is something to keep in mind. So if you want it to just still be part of the kernel and not have to worry about the DKMS stuff, if you compile your own kernel, you can make sure it's still being compiled into the kernel. Expect no change in QA, quality assurance, and stability of releases, etc. We've got our QA processes ironed out, and we'll still be staging changes before they go into releases that users see. We have plenty of people that test the nightlies, and we have an amazing community of people doing the hard work of testing QA that works well together. The fun thing about the QA process is this is part of the reason the project is in the position that it's in right now. Not that there is anything wrong with fixing bugs and ironing things out and all that good stuff, but the whole, like pushing out changes up to the kernel as quickly as possible. And this right here is one of the reasons why I think it's going to go so much better for BcacheFest outside of the kernel. If they have changes they want to push, you don't have to work against any sort of external schedule, any sort of kernel development model. You can just push things whenever you want to, and clearly that's the model that Kent is more comfortable dealing with. 6.16 has turned out to be a very solid release, and BcacheFest so far, isn't being deleted from the kernel. And honestly, I kind of don't expect it to. Because if Kent is going to swap to developing things outside of the kernel, that sort of eliminates a lot of the tension that exists. And when there is no tension, think RiserFS, for example. How long did RiserFS exist in the kernel? even though basically no one was working on it, and basically no one was using it. I would expect it to sit around the kernel probably for the next five or so years, especially with Kent not being in a situation where he's going to piss off Linus. This is important because it's going to take a bit to get all the packaging issues sorted out, and DKMS needs distribution-specific testing, so it looks like most users will still be running the 6.16 release when 6.17 comes out. For some specifics, since the 6.16 release, there have been zero new critical bug reports. The bug fixing activity has been mainly performance bugs, test dashboard bugs, low severity stuff that's unlikely to ever affect users, and the high security bug was a repair bug, where we still repair and mount successfully with zero user intervention, just via a more expensive code path than normal, so a minor annoyance, not severe. See, this is one of the things I am kind of sad about with BcacheFS, because nobody in the kernel has ever been critical of Kent's technical ability, of the work being done on BcacheFS, and there was a chance that this would become a really cool and really popular file system. It's just being held back entirely by Kent's inability to work within the kernel community. Nobody's ever criticized on a technical front within the kernel, but he'll do the same thing to projects like ButterFS even though they've only been nice to him. I've been communicating with both Debian and OpenSUSE kernel maintainers who were initially under the impression that BcacheFest would no longer be supported and they're holding off so we can have the DKMS stuff ready. This is what was happening over here. They were just going to turn it straight off so that I, I actually don't know because there would be absolutely no transition period here. You would go from 6.16 to 6.17 and then things would just break. And I can't imagine they would be uh, posting a clear update notice about this. And then for Debian, they've basically had it on life support for quite a while anyway. So frankly, I'm not surprised that they were flipping it off. What still needs to happen for distribution support? So previously, having an up-to-date BcacheFest tools was not critical. We've got good compatibility between kernel and user space, and we don't depend on user space FSCK. User space and kernel space are equally well supported with an automatic fallback to the kernel FSCK implementation on version mismatch. This has meant that distribution BcacheFest tools packages were low priority, and people on EG Debian have generally been compiling from Git and updating infrequently. 
Bcash Festivals in Debian was orphaned and then removed, and so preferably we need to get it back into experimental or alternatively get a PPA going. Yes, we love PPAs on Debian. I'm sure all of the I'm sure all of the Debian fans would be super excited about a PPA on Debian. Anyway, here is the I guess bug report, request, whatever you want to call it, for potentially reintroducing Bcash Fest tools. Now let's just say there's a bit of friction in doing so. There were already issues with maintaining the packages, they're already a bit of a mess to maintain, and then there's some people in here who don't exactly like Kent, who don't exactly like the way he's been talking about Debian, especially after this was removed, and like it's it's just generally a lot of do we want to do this? Is it a good thing to do this? Like, is this worth the hassle? How many people are actually going to be affected if we don't do this? However, even though Kent does enjoy shit talking every project that does him even slightly wrong, other maintainers here think that maybe he's kind of justified in some of the complaints. If things are broken, then that is a problem to fix. So it's still unclear exactly what's going to happen here. If it's going to be returned, what else is going to happen following this? But there's definitely a discussion happening. And as I was mentioning earlier, the situation should be good on Arch. I didn't mention NixOS, but NixOS as well. We frequently work with those distributions and the DKMS support that just landed in Bcash Fest tools came from an Arch user. Fedora has a maintained Bcash Fest tools package and there are other distributions that have Bcash Fest uses I'm aware of, but we haven't ascertained the packaging situation, e.g. OpenSUSE. I was informed in the discussion for the kernel package that DKMS there will likely need special attention. From one of the OpenSUSE people over in the OpenSUSE thread, DKMS is not really integrated with kernel updates in OpenSUSE. Nothing will rebuild DKMS modules for the newly installed kernel. Of course, it is possible to add scriptlets and triggers similar to what NVIDIA package does. It still needs someone to package and maintain it, and the NVIDIA package routinely fails to properly build modules on update either. So this isn't a problem with BcacheFS itself, it's a problem with how OpenSUSE does things in their build system. I don't know why they do it the way they do it, but that is the way they do it. If you're aware of a distribution with BcacheFS users that needs attention, please contact me or the community. We'll need people testing the DKMS packages on various distributions. Please get in contact if you can help with that, or even better, if you're experienced in packaging, we can use you. Now, as much as Kent may not be happy about being in this situation, it is something entirely of his own making. But also, I think this is a far healthier place for the project to be. I don't think BcacheFS ever should have been upstreamed into the kernel. Kent was never ready to work within the kernel community, and clearly the BcacheFS development model does not align with the upstream kernel. And that's not inherently a bad thing. If you don't align with the kernel, do things outside the kernel, right? Like, you can't force the kernel to work around your development model because you don't want to follow the rules, even though everybody else is capable of doing so, even everybody else who is doing file system development, work outside the kernel, right? Work outside the kernel, and this is the way it should have been from the very start. There never would have been this tension, there never would have been this like weird back and forth and Linus not wanting to pull the project for way, way too long, and we probably never would have talked about it anywhere near as much as we did if it was just a file system outside the kernel doing cool things and Kent's a bit of a aggressive person to work with. I can't imagine there would have been any of this drama happening. And if there comes a point where it's ready and Kent is willing to work with the kernel development model, maybe then there can be a discussion about bringing it back. Until then, Linus doesn't have to deal with someone who doesn't want to follow any of the timing rules. Just because 30 years ago, 20 years ago, nobody was working around these rules because they didn't exist yet and things were going perfectly fine, doesn't mean that now you can keep doing the same thing. 
over the years, practices changed. Over the years, rules changed. And if you're going to work in the kernel today, you have to work around how the kernel wants to operate. But what do you think? Do you think this is a change for the best? Do you think nothing's going to happen? Do you think that Kent is still going to do the normal Kent things in the kernel? I would love to know. So let me know your thoughts down below. Go subscribe as well. And if you liked the video, go like the video. If you really liked the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, subscribe, sell, bear, pay in the description down below. That's going to be it for me. And I know where the buttons are. You saw nothing.